Good morning, friends. It's a joy, a deep joy to be with you and to share in worship with you this morning. A welcome to folks that are joining in worship online. We also know that you are present with us. The last time that we, we and you and I, shared in worship together was Easter Vigil a little over a year ago. It was online, as most everything was, with a whole collective of fun spirits for a joy-filled and, dare I say, goofy celebration of God's stories and our story leading up to the great story of the Easter resurrection a year ago. And so it is fitting, I think, that I am here to be with you this Easter and honored to be here in person. You heard a little bit about me. Thank you, Christy, for sharing that. And I am honored to serve in a few different roles right now. I am the pastor of an experimental and experiential dinner church called Emmaus Table in Green Lake at 7400 Woodlawn. Yes, that is where Bethany Lutheran was and new life springs forth in that place. Our address 7400 Woodlawn is the name of our collective, our collective of musicians and artists and community builders. 7400 Woodlawn is known as a center for community, arts, and spirituality. And it reflects much of the spirit of what is happening here with sharing space like for the Elizabeth Gregory home and others that you have here. And so we too, like you, are growing growing in diversity, growing in a fullness, growing in numbers and opportunities to be the people of God in this time and place. I also am a spiritual director coach and recently appointed as the coach coordinator for Coach Northwest, which is the coaching ministry of Northwest Washington Synod, coaching, a way to live into how do we learn the way forward in this time by listening to the way that God's spirit is prompting us, asking good questions, and leaning in to listen. What is God up to now? There's a fullness in my life and a fullness in our church, in our churches. Our churches, ours and yours and the greater church. Amidst all the changes that this time and place is, there is, a, there is a sense, a growing sense, that the Spirit is calling us together in this very time, and I'm excited for that and honored to be joining you to share in that together today. And we have a difficult sometimes but an always holy work to do, so let us be in prayer. Loving God, give us ears to hear your voice, your voice, clearly among all the other voices, shouting often and pleading for our attention. Give us eyes to see you even in the darkness, and give us your wisdom and good courage to reflect and become your loving kindness this day and every day. Amen. It was a dark moment for Jesus when our gospel reading began. We might not know that because the verses are just a few, but it's it's helpful to note that the verse right before our reading starts records Judas leaving to go out and betray his master and friend. And the narrator adds this little phrase, and it was night. It was dark indeed. So I ask a question that bubbles up in my heart and my consciousness often, and maybe it it does for you too. I ask, how do we hear love in the midst of betrayal, disappointment, darkness of spirit, and spiritual night? How do we hear of love even in the anticipation and in the midst of death? Perhaps you resonate with such a question. How can we talk of love? We people that are love people, right? We people that are God people. How is it that we can talk of love in the midst of anger and pain and betrayal and loss? And not just talk of love. We might do that well, but how do we actually love? How can we? 
If you do resonate with such questions, know you are not alone. Among people of faith, as well as those who are not religious, many, many, many feel betrayed by our country, its citizens and its leaders, the Supreme Court and lawmakers in many states right now as rights and protections are stripped from women, especially women of color and other vulnerable people. Many feel betrayed by lawmakers and even school boards. As close as Marysville, this week attempting to enact laws, policies, and rules that put already vulnerable transgender youth in even greater danger. In our world, there is the feeling of betrayal. All around us, we see and we hear of betrayal. When the power hungry, you can name the states and the countries, the power hungry can wage war and waste life. Why? Simply because they can. And not just them, but me too. In my waste of the earth's resources, in my ambivalence toward hungry, toward those who are hungry and poor, in my striving for material success and security and my bottom line, there is a sense of betrayal even that I feel within myself. And many are disillusioned and even worse, feel enraged and often rightly so, and certainly betrayed by our churches, by the church, living far too often with scarce resemblance to Jesus, living neither into or out of our highest and best truth as God's beloved in the world, sharing the boundless love, and scandaling, amazing grace of God, do we reflect that? It feels like a betrayal. Too much of what is called Christian today does not look or feel very much like Christ at all. Not like the Christ that I have met and try to know, the love that has carried me and so many other beloveds that I have known. So we're invited to once again turn as people of the book to see the face of Jesus the Christ in the pages of his story for hope and for guidance in the face of betrayal, loss, and despair. As I said, it was a dark, it was dark at night at the moment of our reading when it began. The darkness of night and the darkness of betrayal. It begins when Judas had gone out. It said he, but we know it was when Judas had gone out, Jesus said. And what exactly did Jesus say? We might expect a speech about how evil Judas is and how awful the consequences of his actions. But Jesus, but Jesus, instead focuses not on the betrayal, not on the heartbreak, but in ju instead Jesus focuses on his priority, on his mission, and has, on his beloveds, on preparing his disciples for what is to come. Jesus tells them in the most tender of terms, little children, little children. He tells them that he will be with them only a little longer, and then he repeats not once, not twice, but three times that they are to love one another. We surely are not surprised by this, but can you imagine what that felt like to the disciples? Right after this emotional roller coaster that they've been on that very evening, Jesus, the master, humbly washing their feet. It was scandalous the intimate Passover meal that very well could be their last meal together. Where Jesus is making his impending death known and the political turbulence is building and swirling and heightening all around them, Jesus then calling out that there was a betrayer followed by Judas' departure. Can you imagine what the disciples felt like in that moment? Confusion, overwhelm, anxiety, fear, anger, sadness. And into all of this, Jesus speaks over and over and over again, three times, 
not an insignificant number to the Gospel of John and to the whole Christian story, three times love one another. Love is all there truly is. All are welcome. We choose love. Sound familiar? I found it on the back of your bulletin today, and I know that it is what you live into, right? The final page of your bulletin is also the final, best, last word. All are welcome, so we choose love. Yes. Yes, I love it. Christianity has put major emphasis on loving God, and that is not a bad thing. But might we miss the first and consistent overwhelming experience of how God loves us? Do we also choose to know that love? I'm not sure why each and every one of you came here today, here to church. We realize, I think, when we gather like this, that we are part of an increasingly dwindling few who come to worship either in person or online. I bet there are a bunch of reasons that we could all call out and identify together. I think that they might fall into some of these categories. I want to be here. I need to be here. I get to be here. I should be here. I have a job to do. That's true for me, but I also want to be here, right? My mom brought me, my kiddo might say. (laughs) I would be missed if I weren't here. My day would not be complete without coming to church on Sunday morning or maybe another time. I enjoy the music. I sure do. The people, the message, I hope. I come for the communion table, the nourishment of the body of Christ and the nourishment of my body, my mind and my spirit. Or I need to confess I need to confess and I need to hear and feel God's forgiveness. Somewhere in each of our lists of reasons, I hope we seek also reminders of how much God loves us. I am here because I know that God loves me. We want also to experience God's love again and because we do want to learn to love better. Franciscan Franciscan mystic Tadodi expresses the voice of a heart that has been loved. Listen to his words. I want to love back the way that I have been loved. But it's not like I've got to prove my love for God by doing things. My job is to simply complete the circuit. I want to love back the way I have been loved. I come because I want to complete the circuit. Richard Rohr, one of my favorite living prophets, sadly, probably not living much longer, but living strongly still. Richard Rohr speaks of love in a way that helps me to understand that we can and do find ways to give that love back through our forms of worship and through our acts of service, but it's never earning the love, never about earning the love. It's always about returning the love. Can you feel the difference? Returning God's love is almost an entirely different language. I hope that you have felt that energy of the circuit of of love being complete, that language of love being in your heart and through your hands and on your lips and from your friends and even in the world that is the flowing of God's love that doesn't stop because the circuit is closed. It's being completed, right? I hope that you have felt this love and I promise And as much as I know anything, I promise that it's available to you. Maybe we just need to be told that this divine intimacy is what we should expect. But sometimes I think we're afraid to ask for it. We're afraid to seek it out. It feels like it's presumptuous on my part, my little self. We don't trust sometimes that such love exists. 
and for us, but it does. To each and every one of us, Jesus welcomes my little child. You are most beloved. The passage we read today has been given the title, The Farewell Discourse, Jesus' last and therefore very important words for his disciples, people like you and me. With betrayals and anxieties and anger and doubt, Jesus' words for all of humanity and all of creation. Jesus says, love one another. In this circuitry of God's love, love one another. Stay connected. Stay connected in, in the complete and mysterious circuitry of God's love. Jesus, Jesus' advice, no, it was way more than advice. Jesus' prayer, yes, it was the deepest of prayers. Jesus is speaking about reality, the reality, not just his reality, the reality, about the power of creation, the power of transformation, the power of ultimate completion, reality. Jesus is telling us what is real, what is really real. Love one another, love one another, love one another. Can you feel the pulsing of the energy that just keeps reminding us this is what is real? Love one another. James Finley encourages us not to stop at remembering the love, not saying, look what I've experienced, or to claim, look what I've achieved, but to say and to keep on saying, look what love has done to me. There's nothing left but being love itself, giving itself away as you simply are. And John of the Cross says, contemplation, and I would add prayer and life, is nothing other than a secret, peaceful, loving inflow of God. And if given room, it will fire the soul in the spirit of love. Love is something we feel, yes. Love is something we do, surely. But even more, love is what carries us and holds us and keeps us pressing on and makes us complete through it all. Love is what we are and love is what we become. O oh, holy love, teach us once again by your presence the new commandment, the reality that we are love to one another. Loving God, give us ears to hear your voice clearly among all the other voices, shouting sometimes and pleading for our attention. Give us eyes to see even in the darkness and give us wisdom and good courage to reflect and become your loving kindness this day and every day. Amen. I invite you to rise and we sing together. <laughs>